We're beginning to find out that our behavior is not in alignment with nature. And so if we want to move forward into our world, we have to use the, the, the wisdom of Albert Einstein to understand this. You cannot solve the problems with the same thinking that created the problems. So in our civilization today, as we're facing extinction because of human behavior, we have to recognize that we are responsible and our beliefs and our behaviors are contributing to this extinction. In this regard, I really would like to list what I call the four assumptions of the apocalypse. These are four assumptions that we bought into as being scientifically accurate and have built a culture on these beliefs. And so I'll just list them as number one, I call them myth perceptions, that's not a lisp. These are myths that we bought into and are running our lives with these and now find that these myths are scientifically invalid. Myth number one is simply the concept that biological processes employ Newtonian physics. The relevance of that myth is simply this. In a Newtonian world, we only study the material physical plane and totally ignore the invisible realm, the energy, the spirit. Uh, that aspect is not part of our conventional science. What's interesting about that is in only studying the physical realm, this is no longer part of real science for a new science has come in. The new science is called quantum physics. And quantum physics doesn't remove Newtonian physics. Quantum physics is a much larger science. Newtonian physics is only a small piece of quantum physics. So quantum physics is the overriding science. And what do we find out from quantum physics, as we'll go into in depth, that everything is made out of energy. Everything you think is matter is actually energy. And why is that relevant? Because what appears to be matter, that form of energy, is also connected to all the other forms of energy. So when you leave energy, the environmental energy, out of an equation, then you're missing a very important component that determines the quality and character of our lives. So we have to add a quantum physics perspective to our science to bring it up to date. Myth perception number two is the continuing belief, especially held by the public, uh, that genes control our biology. Well, this turns out to be totally false. And uh, I so look forward to talking about this in uh, a, a subsequent section. And the significance is there's a new science, a new science of heredity that is called epigenetics. And epigenetics, it sounds like genetics, is a revolution that will transform civilization on this planet. Just that belief alone is a revolution. But there are two other beliefs that we bought into that are also affecting uh, our drive toward extinction. And these two beliefs are directly connected to Darwinian theory. So myth perception number three is the belief called survival of the fittest. And the significance of the survival of the fittest is that it gives us a world based on competition, that everyone is driven to not be at the bottom, to be somewhere in the safe zone. So it's a race uh, against each other, a competitive battle. And the significance of competition is that at one level, competition might be peaceful, but competition can easily turn violence and competition can easily turn into war. And so what we're seeing on this world stage today is a lot of violence that is then covered up by saying, oh, that's just due to the survival of the fittest, that's just nature and life. And the fact is, no, it's not. Because we now know that evolution is not based on competition. Evolution is based on cooperation. A garden is not a battle zone. A garden is a cooperative community. And we are supposed to be part of that garden. And unfortunately, in our world, uh, in our striving for fitness and competition, we have actually destroyed the garden from which we come. So it's not survival of the fittest. I make up my own word in this case. It's the survival of the fittingest. Those that are most capable of adapting to the existing environment and the existing organisms on this planet will be encouraged to survive. Those that challenge the existing structure will be facing extinction, and that's where human civilization is at this particular moment. 
The last misperception, misperception number four, again, a variation based on Darwinian theory is this. According to conventional Darwinian theory, the neo-Darwinian theory, the new version of it based on a molecular insight that Darwin didn't have, we see that random mutations are the first step in an evolutionary rise, meaning an organism reproduces and one of its offspring has an altered gene, a mutation, changes the characteristic of that organism. And then from that point on, the organism it will change itself and its structure and its behavior as it evolves into the environment. So why is it important to emphasize that random processes are not the source of evolution? Because if you understand that, then it says then there was no purpose for us on this planet, that we just got here by a whole series of accidental mutations, and that purpose is really not relevant to anything. Well, once we disconnect ourselves from the environment, then we actually tread on that environment as if, as if the environment is separate from who we are. We are the environment. We evolved from the environment. We are part of the ecosystem. We didn't get here by accident. We now know there are different kinds of mutations, not random ones, but more or less called beneficial, directed, or adaptive type mutations. These are mutations that actually enhance the viability of an organism. Random mutations almost inevitably cause defects and the loss of an organism because of defective genes. So random mutations are not the real source of the advancement in evolution. Hat dir dieses Video gefallen? Gib uns ein Zeichen und lasse einen Daumen nach oben da. Bist du interessiert an weiteren solchen kostenlosen Videos? Dann abonniere unbedingt unseren Kanal und drücke die Benachrichtigungsglocke, denn nur so stellst du sicher, dass du kein weiteres Video verpasst. Danke dir und bis zum nächsten Video.